I've actually had, at this point, four boob jobs and I'm 26 years old. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy you're watching. Thank you so, so much for the support. Tomorrow is surgery day. I am finally getting my implants removed and having a three-part procedure, which I am so excited about. I've wanted to do this for so long. I've had so many problems with my boobs. I wanted to film the last time that you are ever gonna see these totters because they are going. If you follow me on Instagram, if you don't, please do. Um, but if you have been following me on Instagram, then you will know that I have been talking a little bit about getting my implants removed. I think I originally had my implants put in when I was 21. So a fair few years ago now, I'm 26. The reason why I got my boobs done in the first place was simply because I wasn't happy with the, the size difference. It was never because I wanted fake boobs or because I wanted, you know, my boobs to be bigger and more visible. I just simply wanted them corrected. I had one that was bigger than the other. To me, it was very noticeable and it's all about what you personally feel what you personally think what I could specifically notice is when I would wear like a you know a crop top and a skirt to go out on a night out or something one of the cups of my bra would be like that and it would like stick to my boobs and one of them would like be coming out it was just unsymmetrical as well as unsymmetrical boobs they were just naturally droopy I'm low chested that's what the surgeon said whether that's just code name for you've got saggy boobs <laughs> um, but I'm low chested and also when you first go for like a consultation for your boobs they measure the distance from the top of your chest to where your nipple is and around and basically my measurements were just naturally further down to where it should be. I did say like I want you know them as basically as small as possible and he said I couldn't go any smaller and um, because for what I wanted it just wouldn't work. I don't remember exactly what like the CC was or anything like that. Uh, implants are measured in something called CC in case you didn't know. So I had them done. When I first came out of surgery I was like super happy. But up to the week later I was like really happy with the way they looked. I was walking around like a little playboy bunny with my new boobs, feeling really good about myself, feeling quite sexy if I do say so myself. And then six to 12 weeks, let's say, I noticed that they start to drop. Now, it always scared me when the surgeon said like, don't be alarmed if they, you know, don't look exactly like this. They're always gonna drop a little bit. It's like, it's just gravity. They'll just go to where your like chest rests. Mine dropped quite severely. I loved the shape of them when they first came out and then they start to drop and I was like, oh. At this point, as they started to drop, as the months went on, I also started to recognize that there was still some difference in the size. Now, I'm not saying that's anybody's fault. It's obviously a really hard thing to do and it just didn't work out quite right. So they just basically started to become a droopier, bigger, more visible, more obvious version of what they were before, which was just obviously not what I wanted, especially because I literally sold my car to have my boobs done. Don't ask why, I just did. I had a Beetle convertible at the time, sold it and got a pair of boobs. I obviously didn't have the money to like go and sort them out straight away. I don't know why, I just just felt uncomfortable like going back to the surgeon and saying I was unhappy but then eventually I did which was probably nearly like two years later I just went back and said oh, I'm really not happy with my boobs I don't like the way they look I feel like they're a bigger version of what I had before from what I was like when I went I had my first initial surgery it was probably two and a half or maybe even three stone lighter than what I am today so I was like small my body was in its peak what you are when you're young and trim and whatever so I put on a bit of weight so that, that obviously didn't help the droopiness either the surgeon had actually retired so at this point I was then having my surgery done with someone who he's worked with for years and years he was amazing I had a consultation with him we then decided that we were going to do a new set of boobs all together so I was going to get the implants that I had previously the first time taken out I would also have a lift because my boobs are just naturally droopy and also at this point I'd have to have my nipples moved too because they just weren't in the right place that was like a three-part procedure as well so I had that cost me an arm and a leg it looked amazing within within six weeks of having these new boobs coming out of the second surgery I was super happy they looked quite petite they looked quite small and I was really happy with how they looked you can see from this picture like they just look like a good you know normal sized boob then within six weeks one of my boobs I think it was the left boob it started to feel quite hard and it started to creep up my chest so at this point I had a whole like Pamela Anderson like round ball thing going on and I was like what's going on here so I rang the surgery told them went and saw the surgeon who's absolutely lovely and he said it kind of looks like an encapsulation although I don't think it is because it would be very extremely rare and I've not even had a case like this before you know, to have this after just literally having the surgery unless you've had some kind of trauma but that wasn't the case I worked from home as you know for a really long time you know I wasn't doing any exercise I was following all of the correct 
aftercare, like not lifting anything, just kind of resting my boobs, wearing my sports bra, wearing my stockings, all of that kind of thing. Obviously my body just did not like these new boobs, or this one new boob. He said, look, it could be fluid that's surrounded the implant or surrounded the muscle or something. What is best to do now is to book an x-ray and then go and see if they can see any fluid. If there is, they'll take a large needle and they'll syringe it out. So I was like, okay. <laughs> Bit annoying, but okay. Went to the x-ray, was really hoping that they would say it's fluid, but no, it wasn't fluid. She said she couldn't see anything. So went back to the surgeon and he said, if it's not fluid, then it is looking like the early signs of an encapsulation, which is obviously extremely rare. At this point, I was like, wow, this is literally crazy. Following his advice, he basically said he wouldn't like to open me back up so quickly. Let's see how it settles. Some people actually live with an encapsulation. He doesn't think unless I'm in massive pain that it's gonna cause much harm. So like, let's just see how it is for like a couple of months or so. It didn't change, nothing changed at all. And then decided to move in July to Spain for a month. And then obviously two months later came back here. I actually have such a problem with this left boob now that if I lie down, my implant actually slips to the side of my chest. It doesn't actually stay there. So this one stays like that. This one, when I'm lying down, the implant literally collapses to the side of me. So it's six months prior to going to this consultation, the surgeon actually confirmed when I was in there. I told him about the encapsulation on the left hand side where this implant slips through and he actually examined the right boob and he said there's also an encapsulation this side as well but this one doesn't slip to the right thank god otherwise i would just literally be sat there on a sun lounger with both implants <laughs> inside of my chest at least i can hide this one with my arm and a pina clara i've always had in the back of my head like i obviously need to get this fixed being here i found a really amazing clinic here in marbella which is literally like down the road from us called ocean clinic and they've won multiple awards and i'm like right i need to go and see these guys and talk to them so pre-covid went to them told them about my problems they spoke to me about what they thought was necessary for my boobs they said what they think is they need to take the implants out but also they need to think about what i'm going to be left with they want obviously me as a young 26 year old to be happy with what's going to be there it's unrealistic to think that they can just come out now and they're going to go and be what they were because they're not the nipples have changed the skin will have changed the skin will have stretched the skin's used to being like you know pulled with an implant it's probably going to be very saggy it's probably going to be very squidgy and wrinkly and like i have a vision of what it's going to look like and it's just awful so i wasn't really thinking about that i was just thinking i really want to get these out because my body's obviously just clearly rejecting them so then they were talking to me about you know the different things that you could have done that would basically stop my chest looking like literally 104 year olds once the implants come out. I want to be able to wear, I don't want to be walking around with, you know, super droopy, horrible boobs. Basically what they said was they could do something called fat grafting, where basically they would take fat from another area of my body. I was like, just take it all. Have whatever you want. You can take it from here, here, here. They said they would basically lipo a part of my body and they would then use that fat to do a fat transfusion, basically shape the breasts with my own fat. So rather than putting a foreign object in, they could use my own fat which couldn't reject itself because it's already within my body I already have that fat there and so this then becomes a three-part procedure so rather than taking just the implants out what they're gonna do is they are gonna take the implants out lipo my squidgy bits here which we all have and they're going to use that fat to shape the top half of the breast so that my um boobs aren't like empty tea bags i get a, a nicer shaped breast which obviously sounds better than just the implants coming out and at the same time you know i'm going to have fat taken away from here which is nice so that's the three-part procedure that i'm having I went for a consultation today which was amazing just spoke over like the whole procedure how it's going to happen um, it's actually not even an overnight job over here. You go home on the same day. They said the recovery isn't too strenuous. It'll be about 10 days until like I'm virtually back to normal. And he thinks that we're gonna get a really great result on. My body's obviously just clearly rejecting these implants. It just doesn't want them there. Like they're a foreign object. My body doesn't want them. But you guys know as well, if you follow me on Instagram and stuff, that I've been suffering really badly with social anxiety for quite some time. I've actually been reading up a little bit about breast plant illness, which I'm not going to say I have because I, you just are never going to know. But one of the symptoms of breast plant illness is severe anxiety, which I definitely have had. But I'm also really looking forward to seeing whether it actually starts to improve my anxiety. I'm going to be vlogging this whole thing. I'm going to vlog some of the recovery as well because I think that's a really important part of the process. But he did say that it wasn't going to be too much of a hard recovery, which is 
great news. Three of Jack's best friends are actually coming for a, just less than a week whilst I'm recovering in, I'll be going into the spare room in our apartment just so I'm a bit closed away. So they're all going to be literally partying like mad while I'm sat there eating all of my food that I've gone and bought from Iceland today. I wanted all English food, you know, I wanted like crumpets and cinnamon grams and cheese and broccoli batches pasta because I'm not really going to be able to do a lot. I'm going to literally be in bed, working, doing emails, probably binge watching some Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So I wanted to have some really nice food on a nice tray and basically I'm just going to be waiting on hand and foot and I literally can't wait. It's operation time tomorrow. I'm not allowed to eat from midnight till I go in, which won't be too hard because I don't really normally eat after midnight anyway, but I will be eating right up until. Not feeling nervous at all really. I'm quite laid back when it comes to things like this and I think it's because I have actually done four or five of these already with my boobs. So I don't really feel like it's going to be too much of a big deal, but yeah. I am um, hoping everything goes well and yeah, I'll be back. Surgery day, about to make our way to the clinic. Excuse the mess of the apartment. Jack's actually more scared than I am, aren't you babe? Yeah. He doesn't like being the thought of being put under or anesthetic, which I actually quite like. Nice deep sleep. I'm literally so tired, I went to bed so late, so I'm actually quite looking forward to having a bit of a rest. So I've got my beach bag full of goodies, just my dressing gown, etc. Got some really, really old joggers on, um, flip flops, a little bit of a lip mask going on, I've got super dry lips and we are literally ready to go. Have you got everything? Yeah, let's go. We'll see you at the clinic guys. It's a beautiful day to get your boobs taken out. So Jack, I want to know how you're feeling about this operation. You're excited for, yeah. the new, for the new wangers? I'm really excited just to be a lot happier with the situation. Uh -huh. um, yeah, just the fact that it's not going to hurt your back, that you're just going to be generally happy with them. Yeah. I'm anxious for you to go under the, the knife, under the anaesthetic. I don't, I don't know how long that is for. I've got no idea. I actually have no idea about what time you're supposed to be picking me up or anything. My guess is it's going to be a few hours, mm. a few hours. Yeah. One thing which is a little bit, not strange, but different, I guess, to being in the UK is that you obviously stay there and you get monitored by nurses after, whereas <laughs> I'm be monitored by you when I get back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm coming back from a third part operation and you don't stay overnight. That's not what I'm used to. You're going to pick me up, take me home and then pop me into bed and that's... Yeah, we need to get all the prescriptions. Can you do that so that I'm not staying in the car after the up and you don't get that in between? I'm not sure if I can pick those up, but you need to take your passport. Mm. So yeah, we only live like five, ten minutes away from the surgery, which is nice and convenient. These speed bumps aren't going to be very nice on the way back. But, yeah, I'm just super excited to get there now get my little cloak on and um, have a good sleep and wake up with a whole new chest. It's going to be a good feeling. So. Right then, off we go. It's Saturday. So the great thing about Ocean Clinic is there's a car park literally across the road. Which is great because Marbella parking yeah. is absolutely carnage. Don't peek this outfit. <laughs> this is the last hour of the boobs then. Let's have a look. I don't, <laughs> I don't see the problem. Here we go then. I don't know if you can hear me through this mask, but I'll do my best. It means your shoes with coronavirus. And the last time you had something to eat or drink? About 11. Nothing during the night, not even water, nothing. Okay. Um, so, you have to get changed. Yep. These are slippers, the hat, you just open it up, and you can put your either your hair loose or very, very high or very, very low because you'll be there. Yep. Okay. And the gown, you leave it open at the front. Okay. You have a bathroom there, mm -hmm. and in here you have a um, bathroom. Okay, just put. Uh, the doctor should be here shortly, so if you get changed and ready, go to the door and relax, and he'll be coming. Okay, thank you. 
Open at the front. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to be open at the front right now in this situation. Yeah, I have this little pig gown on. The boobs are falling out. And they, they don't let you wear proper pants, so I literally have this material in a G-string. Like a G-string at the front and the back, so literally the whole thing's out. If I'd known that, I might have, you know, pretty drip a bit. I thought I'd wear any, like the big pants that you get in the UK that you have said. Could you sleep well? Yeah, I slept alright actually. I'm not really, I don't really get nervous things like this. I've had that many good jobs now. I'm just used to it. It's like a yearly occurrence. What kind of size are my new pants? You now at the moment have a, this is bigger than this. Mm. Here's a C and this is a D, double D on this side. So we're going to go down and then... As small as possible. That's, that's <laughs> what we... Okay, mm -hmm. that's it. We're ready to rumble. Okay. Don't be afraid. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. Fine. Thank you so much. We'll pass it down in a moment. Okay. I'm mortified. I'm literally sweating. That was awful. I have sweat dripping down my thighs. Oh, if I had any pride, it's gone now. I've got to stand in front of them with literally my whole body out, belly hanging out. They do make you feel really comfortable. Oh, I hate that bit. You know what I can't wait for? When they say, right, we're just about to put the anaesthetic in, so we're going to go for a nice sleep in four, three, two, one, and you're like, oh. I feel like an elephant is sat all the way around my chest. Are you happy it's all done? Yeah. I said it went really well. Really? Mm. Did you dream about anything? I knew that I kept waking up when I was in there. <laughs> and I kept waking up when I was in the recovery, but like... Oh, I thought you went halfway through the up. And I kept thinking, please don't wake me up yet, because I'm so tired. Thank you. Would you like a coffee or a tea? Mm, not yet, thank you. Later, maybe. Yeah. Thank you. Just give me some bloody bakers. Is it hurt? Yeah. Oh. oh. I want you to stay with me. I really need to go back when just killing me. Right. It's like a book that you can pass. Yes. Where? It's in a remote. You ready? Away. Just dab, just dab some lashes. Now, between zero and ten, zero is no pain at all, and ten is the worst pain you can ever imagine. What would it be? Seven. Seven. I'm gonna get you some strong painkillers, okay? Yay! This is quite strong, it's like morphine, mm -hmm. so it might make you feel a little dizzy <laughs> if it does. Obviously, you shouldn't get up or anything, just stay in bed. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, do you want anything for yourself? Uh, tea or coffee? Uh, just some morphine as well. <laughs> <laughs>
So here we are, I'm back visiting Tay. She's been having a lot of morphine because she's in agony. If you can see the... I'm looking, the surgeon came in and they shaped me and he said they look really nice, they did a really good job and they're really small. And also the nurse, the nurse said to me, she was there for the operation and she said they're a really nice shape from the graft in and I've said to her, oh, I'm in so much pain. I need some more painkillers because honestly, the throbbing, she's like, it's not actually your boobs. It's from the, the fat transfusion, it's from the lipo around the sides. She's like, that's what's gonna be really painful. She says, your boobs, we won't even feel. <laughs> so I'm gonna carry on. I've got the lads coming in about four hours. Patty, um, we're gonna have to move Tay into the spare room. Create my little pit. And, and also, if you get the chance, can you get me some chocolate? Chocolate? Yep, yeah, no worries. Adios. Bye. I literally feel so crazy right now. So much morphine, because I've been in so much pain. I'm gonna eat. Got another cup of tea here. I'm gonna have my hobnobs. Drink my tea and I'm going to go home. Home, sweet home. One, two, three, come on. Are you good? Oh, I'm feeling good. Hello. Mommy's not well. I'm sorry. I need some water. And if there's just any more air con. Oh, look, they're not jumping on mixed in. No. Oh, I'm sorry. You came to look after me. Oh, geeks. This side really hurts. Jack. Jack. Sorry to be a pain. Please, could you, um, just pop the lights down. At home. In bed. Literally. So tired. I feel so weird. So weird. So much morphine. And I'm literally looking grey. <laughs> I need some fancy blush right now. <laughs> I've just no energy to move my face. Dogs are in here. Kiki's already found her way. She's not on my chest, don't worry. This is my chest. This is my tummy. And she's already giving me some love on my cheeks. My little princess. Excuse my bruised hair. Look at them. And if she doesn't have them, I'm sure me and the lads will have them. We've got a bit of everything because I don't know what cake she likes. I think the carrot cake looks amazing. That's some kind of meringue. And again, amazing chocolate, amazing. The other three, not for me. But could be for Tay. So it's nearly half ten here now in Marbella our apartment. I am in a lot of pain but also wary that I don't want to take too many painkillers. Honestly I feel like all the morphine I had today and then taking tablets now I just feel so dead basically and it's crazy because I've taken so many drugs now and I can still feel the pain. The majority of the pain is coming from the liposuction the lipo out of my armpits to go into the tops of my boobs to reshape my boobs not any other kind of lipo here that's coming up from here and has gone into reshaping 
my boobs, which is called fat grafting. Oh my god, and honestly, I turned around in the mirror earlier and I can see bruises all the way up and around my arms. And I, you know, when you just know I'm going to be in this bed for a long time in pain, <laughs> I'm really excited to see how everything's going to start to look. It's very exciting, just in so much pain. <laughs> Bit of a strange planning, but the week that Jack's friends are going to come, I'm going to have my surgery at the same time, but it just worked out that way. So it just is what it is. But Jack's surgery is still going to look after me. He always looks after me. So he'll be like making my breakfast and making me dinner and stuff and bringing it in here. Got some boo snoring. I have my sick bowl, which has not got any sick in, so don't worry. My laptop. These were my surgery pants. And obviously if you've got a dog, well, maybe it's just my dogs that are weird. The first thing they do is literally grab your pants. It's disgusting. So yep, they've made it on the bed. I'm so tired and so much pain. When I stand up, I literally can't relax my shoulders. If I relax my shoulders, the pain is unimaginable. I have to like stay like hunched up. It's really, really strange. All part of the recovery and I have to remember that I only had the surgery today. So I think I'm doing all right. This is what you call five star service. Beans, a bird's eye, chicken pie, packet mashed potato. I will be going to sleep and I think the lads are all going out into Porto Penis tonight just to have like a couple beers and a look around which will be really nice for them but yeah I'll speak to you later. Okay lights are off. Sleeping with my babies. Jack's gone out and I'm gonna go to sleep now so I will speak to you all tomorrow and update you with how I feel. Mwah. Oh my god. So I'm feeling quite doolally right now. I'm all dosed up on my meds and I haven't managed to have any breakfast yet. I still feel a bit sick. I've put on my nice Bodhi H&M dress, which is covering up most of my bandage work. I'll just show you. This is what's going on. There's a lot of bruising. I am um, feeling rough, to be honest. Every single part of my body is hurting, I feel a bit sick, I can't really stomach the thought of food, but I'm hungry, you know, all those things that anaesthetic do. Then I'm going to go to the clinic for a checkup. I think my bandages are coming off and I think they're going to fit me with a bra. So I'll see you at the clinic. So we're here at the clinic for my little checkup today. Hopefully get these bandages off. I just told one of the ladies wasn't feeling too good, so Bessa, she just found me a little room and put me in here on a bed. Honestly, the experience here has been so nice. Not one of the staff haven't gone like completely out of their way to make me feel really comfortable and really loved. So I've really enjoyed having it done here at Ocean Clinic. It's been amazing so far. So now I'm just waiting to see if I can get these bandages off. Maybe have a little sleep whilst I wait. Hola! How are you? Fantastic. How, How are you? How are you feeling today? Yeah, you can imagine that you feel a bit groggy, but pain wise is good? Mm, on and off. On and with off. my tablets. With, with the medication, it's fine. Yeah. There's a right to be. There's a reconstructive surgery with a lot of movement of tissue. It's the life for which hurts yeah. more. I told you yesterday yeah. that the thing was you always feel. So, let's kind of look. Should I sit up? This would be great if you can sit up. Look at that. I can think you can already see that uh, quite visible change. And the good thing is, this will feel so much better when this comes out. Look at the trap. There you yeah. go. Yeah. You can go, if you stand on your feet and you look in the mirror, you're going to see already. You're going to be happy. Oh. oh, let's show you it off the bruises and stuff. Wow, look at that. Can you see how, how, how lovely and how beautiful they look now? Wow. Huh? Can you see? Definition, they're the same. They look really, nice. really, really good. Yeah. Don't they? Oh, I bet you will, Afi. They look so good. They look perfect. Will they, they, look at, will they stay quite nice enough yeah. as well? That's more or less a shame they, that they say. Mm. As we reconstruct and everything, you see how they're really firm, they're not hanging anymore. Mm. And I think sense right, look at this. I think it's a lovely, lovely, lovely shape. Perfect. Okay. I'll just put some dry dressing on. Today, that's all we do, okay? And you come for main dressing change on Monday, mm. okay? 
Oh, I'm really happy. Yeah. It was, it was a complicated work together, all right? Because, uh, as you know, so they were really, really asymmetric, really... Um, I took all the feather away here, remember? Yeah. When you had the two belts? Yeah. Okay, that's all gone. And I, I think this is bikini ready. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Just <got> the belly <laughs> okay, please, lay down a moment. Doesn't this feel better already? Come in. Hola. Hola. Oh, is this Taylor's appointment? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much. It doesn't have to go on the breast. And you see that this sits up to the axilla, okay? Yeah. Doing compression of this area. And that's it. This is how you're going to look. And I think it's, it's absolutely what fits your body. Yeah. Yeah, it suits you. Uh -huh. It looks really so much better, doesn't it, Dad? Yeah. Wow, I'm so happy. Thank you so Very much. Very good. Pleasure. So we see you then on Monday yeah. for the next check. You take your medication, please. Okay, mm -hmm. in the sense of the, like it's prescribed on the prescription. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Talk oh, one. Way I know. You have a breast which doesn't look much smaller than before. Yeah. Optically. Yeah. But has no implant anymore. Yeah. This is just your own tissue. And this yeah. is an amazing thing of... Um, with the tissue correction. Is this like quite a new popular thing for people that don't want implants? Yeah, it's, a, it's a lot, yeah, at the moment. We're doing this a lot. A lot of people are deciding they don't want their implants. Yeah, anymore. implants out, or even people on the primary that don't augment this implant, they all augment this yeah. And I guess it's, it's different from having like a foreign object in your body, isn't it? A lot you don't of have to change it, they don't need it, and there's no possibility of encapsulation, all this stuff, no? Wow. Okay. So it is about seven o'clock in Marbella and I've been in bed ever since I went to the surgery this morning to get my bandage changed. I'm actually finding it more difficult to get out of bed than I was now. Super, super painful. So I've just taken more painkillers and there is literally nothing I can do but sleep because I can't move. I can barely get out of bed. I can still feel the throbbing like seriously bad. So I just feel like there's nothing to do but sleep. I'm probably going to be in bed for the rest of the night. Bye bye. <sighs> so it's nearly 5am here. I just ended in chill agony. I've just been crying to Jack. He's literally just got in from his night out. I have the worst sleep. I'm so uncomfortable. I'm just literally in so much pain. It's unimaginable. I've taken some more tablets, but I'm just really hoping that tomorrow and the next day it's gonna get easier because I've got the I've had the worst broken sleep and this is like the worst pain I've ever been in ever. I really underestimated the recovery. I thought this was gonna be quite similar to when you have your boobs done, but it's obviously not. I'm still in the same clothes. I don't think I've actually brushed my teeth today. Maybe not even yesterday. I haven't washed my hair. I'm just literally in so much pain and as soon as I woke up today, I had my pills, which just knocked me out. So I've just literally been asleep in bed, but I keep getting the worst pins and needles in my arms. So I've just been literally putting my music on next to me and just literally going to sleep all day and then all night. I'm just going to have to wait to be better. This is not a pretty situation. Anyway, speak soon. So I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm watching YouTube all day, I've been eating chocolate, drinking tea, and I just had a little bit of a cry because I just got my boobs and bandages out to Jack and they still feel really, really big. Even though I know they're not implants and they're so much better than they were, I'm just panicking a bit because I think I just expected them to be a lot smaller. I'm just a bit worried that they're still going to be really big because at this point I just really don't want boobs. I'll just do anything for just tiny little upright boobs. I can't really compare what my boobs used to look like before I had my boobs done because I also was a lot slimmer and right now I'm just gonna not panic about it. I start to feel a bit better the last couple of hours. Gonna be day three recovery tomorrow. Let's pray that the pain starts to go down a bit and I actually get some sleep because these bags are not Chanel. Just a little thing currently in bed and I just had to take my, my compression bra off because my right arm honestly feels like it's going to drop off. 
you know when someone gives you a dead arm and you have that like throb in and the worrying thing is, is i've took the vest off and it still feels the same this isn't looking good i was really hoping that tonight was going to be a better night anyway i'm going to try and go to sleep so I'll speak to you tomorrow bye so today i had a shower i did get my bandages a bit wet which is a bit worrying but they were okay thankfully they dried off um, i just really needed a wash because i just literally stunk and i just you know you just feel minging just for that like i just feel so much better for having like clean even though my hair's literally green and orange and yellow and all the colors of the rainbow and this bra is suffocating me to the high heavens I've just felt a lot better. Not so much pain today. When I say not so much pain, I mean like pain when you're just kind of like sat there. If I'm like standing up and gravity's like pulling obviously on my boobs, it's painful. I'm not going to lie. Jack's at a pool party with his friends because his friends have been here, as you know, for the past few days. And they've been just so lovely and so quiet and so respectful. Full on lads holiday and they're just, they're just such lovely guys. I've also managed to go on a work call today, which was really, really inspiring and really fun. And I'm just so excited for Monday where my bandages are going to get changed and I have some kind of update on my boobs. But that's it for today. Nothing fun going on here, which, you know, isn't something that I'm used to doing. I always seem to be on the go in some way and always working, but at the minute I don't really feel like... I can work as such. Also, I'm on that many pills that I just can't really concentrate. So, yeah. But anyway, bye. I'm feeling good. So, last two days have been so much better in terms of how I feel. I actually had a really good day today. I haven't done a lot at all, but just literally lounged about, watched YouTube videos, played with the dogs. Boobs have felt okay. I feel a lot more like chirpy and a lot more myself. I have pulled my eyelashes off, which I am upset about because it, that really just did not need to happen. And my lash tech is not gonna be happy that I pulled them off. I feel like I'm still a few days away from, you know, getting back to normal. I mean, I'm, I'm a few weeks away from getting back to normal because obviously I'm still having to be super careful. I'm still in bandages, I actually have blood. I won't show you that because that's pretty disgusting, but I'm a few days away from coming off my meds, which will make me feel a lot more normal. It's just never normal being on codeine and norofam, uh, sorry, ibuprofen, antibiotics and all that kind of stuff. Like it just makes you feel a bit crazy. First couple of days were so rough. I can't even explain how much pain I was in. All I could do was sleep the whole day. And now like other than being pretty bored and frustrated that I can't really do much, I'm just super grateful that I don't feel the way that I did the first couple of days. And you know, I'm just cracking on with it. The doctor's appointment tomorrow. I think he will change my bandages. I really do hope that he says that these are very swollen and that they're gonna go down because they're still a lot bigger than I envisioned them to be. But we'll see, we'll see. Okay, bye guys. It's Monday and um, I'm still looking like an absolute scrot. <laughs> so I'm gonna have the dressings that I had put on on Thursday changed. Thank God, because they absolutely stink. I've literally tried to wash around them, but it's just so hard because you literally can't lift your arms up. And I'm also hoping that he's going to change my sports bra because this compression bra is so painful. And ow! It's also got blood all over the nipples. So it's just a bit grim, to be honest. I've got two days left on my medication. That's good. And then it will just be a case of getting the bruising down because the bruising's really bad, isn't it? Yeah. As expected. That's pretty much it. We're going to go now for the checkup, see Dr. Kai, see what he's got to say. Feel really ticking. So we are just on our way to my third checkup. I think this is going to be with the surgeon rather than the nurse. I've been having like more looks at my boobs and stuff now and, and I'm really happy with how they're looking. I just want to ask him a few questions on whether like they'll change in size or whether they'll drop like from the shape that they are or anything because I'm very happy with how they currently look. However, I did envision myself with slightly smaller boobs but I think that's because I was envisioning what my boobs were like pre-implant. I just want to ask them what to expect changes wise really. Like what I'm most scared for is like a big drop in volume towards the top because that's where I had no volume. So I'm scared that they're gonna 
like drop out of it and kind of, I guess, look like drinking again. That's what my biggest fear is. None of that because I have had a lip and have had, um, obviously, the lipo with the fat graft in. So they've taken fat out of my armpits and they've injected that into my boobs to create the shape of my boobs. So that obviously when you take the implant out, it's not just like, it's like, you know, they've, they've basically created a nice shape for me after the implants have come out so that my boobs still look pleasant. <laughs> One thing I'm really excited for is on the way back, I'm trying to get a Starbucks. Even though it's like super hot here, I'm just really fancy a hot chocolate and maybe a cookie as well. So I'm looking forward to that and then I'm going back and just, you know, keeping up the rest. There's nothing really more that I can do right now than just chill and rest and take it easy. So.